Hi guys, welcome back to your Algebra Notes. Today we are working on 9-6 and we will learn all about the quadratic formula. You're going to love it. It's going to save you so much time. Sometimes. Um, we're also going to learn all about the discriminant, which is also helpful. and We'll get into that in a little bit. By the end of the day, you will be able to solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. You will also be able to find the number of solutions in a quadratic equation. So let's go ahead and get started. A quadratic is in standard form if it is in the following form like this. It says ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. We're going to use this all day today. It's going to come in handy. So we'll start out, we'll make all of our a's red, we'll make our b's green, and our c's will be blue. So let's identify a, b, and c in the following equations. Now first we need to check, are they in standard form? Do they follow the pattern? Yes, they do. Awesome. Cool. That means c is 10, b is negative 9, and a is 4. So we can write a equals 4, b equals negative 9, and c equals 10. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and check our second one. First, is this in standard form? Do they line up x squared plus bx plus something equals zero? Yes, it is in standard form. Awesome. So, oh, we don't have anything there. Yikes, we've got a b, we've got a c. This means our a is one, b is eight, c is negative one. It's very important that you are able to identify these guys because we are going to use them in the quadratic formula. Now, love it. If we are given a quadratic equation in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and a equals something other than zero, so it is a quadratic, then it's your shortcut. Are you ready? Hang on to your britches, guys. Here it comes. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Now I know what you're thinking. Wow, Miss Van Dyke, that's a lot of details. That's a lot of knowledge. How can we ever possibly remember that? Ugh, guys, you know what? You're right. Let's try again. This time, we're going to put it into a song. Do you guys know the song Pop Goes the Weasel? I don't even know how to spell weasel. Pop Goes the Weasel. Let's, let's try that. I hope that's right. Well, if you know that song... This is that song. If you don't know that song, you're about to learn it. <clears throat> so it goes like this. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Isn't that great? Let's do it again. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Lovely. This is because if you have A, you plug in A here and here. If you have a B of B, B goes here and here. And if you have C, you only see him once. <laughs> so again, the quadratic formula states that given quadratic equation in this form, its solutions will be equal to, that is, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Isn't that great? Okay, well, let's put it into practice, shall we? Let's solve 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals 0. First, we need to check 
Does it fit standard form? It does. Awesome. So that means let's make a quick note to ourselves. A equals 2, B equals 3, and C equals what? Negative 5. Okay, that's important to keep handy. Now let's write the quadratic formula. Ready, set, go. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Oh, and by the way, I expect to see this in your homework on every problem. Every problem. Write it down every time. Because we love it. Okay, well, let's go ahead and plug it in. Every time we have a C, we're going to write negative 5. Every time we have a 3, or sorry, every time we have a B, we're going to put 3. And every time we have A, we're going to put 2. So that means x equal x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 5. All over 2 times 2. Whew, that was a lot. Now the good news is we can simplify that a whole lot. X equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus, let's see, 40? Nice. All over 2a. And we're almost there. Negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 49 over 4. What's the square root of 49? 7. Negative 3 plus or minus 7 over 4. Ha! We're almost there. Now how do we clean this guy up? Well, you see this plus or minus right here? This plus or minus, we're going to split into two solutions. So we have, this is x equals, by the way, x equals negative 3 plus 7 over 4, and x equals negative 3 minus 7 over 4. Again, we split the plus or minus into a plus and a minus. And now let's simplify. So x equals negative 3 plus 7 is 4 over 4, which is 1. And x equals negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10 over 4. So negative 5 halves, or negative 2 and a half is fine. So we say x equals 1 and negative 5 halves. There we go. Those are our solutions. Isn't that great? Yeah, of course it's great. Wonderful. Let's do it again. We have one more example. Okay, what are the solutions of x squared minus a equals 2x? Oh, yikes. Guys, that's not in standard form. Not at all. Well, let's, let's get him there. How can we get him there? Well, first we need to equal to 0. So let's minus 2x from both sides. We get x squared minus 8 minus 2x equals 0. Is that in standard form yet? No, not quite. We need to use the commutative property to move those guys around. So x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Is that in standard form? Yes. Super. Okay, so that's what we're working with. So we're going to take our work. We're just going to make it, make it small. Get it out of the way real quick. Here we go. Here is our problem. Okay. So let's identify A, B, and C real quick. A is 1. B is negative 2. C is negative 8. Guys, it's our favorite time. It's time for the quadratic formula. Okay, ready? x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Super! Let's go ahead and plug it in. Wherever we have an a, 
we're going to put a 1. Wherever we have a B, let's put negative 2. And wherever we have a C, <laughs> let's use negative 8. Right there. Oh, I even copied the heart. Bye. Okay, so that means... x equals negative negative 2 plus or minus negative 2, the square root of negative 2 squared, minus 4 times 1 times c all over 2 times 1. Now the hardest part really is just getting them all plugged in. And we did that. So now let's clean it up. Okay. Equals... 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 32 all over a 2. Okay, we're almost there. Equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 36 all over 2, which is 2 plus or minus 6 all over 2. Okay, now we can split him up because we've got our plus and our minus. So our plus and minus, we're going to split into a plus and into a minus. So we have x equals 2 plus 6 all over 2. x equals 2 minus 6 all over 2. And that's 8 over 2, which is 4. And negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. Sweet. So x equals 4 and negative 2. Awesome. Look at all that hard work we did, you guys. Isn't that amazing? It's fantastic. Good job. But we didn't need to do it. Ms. Van Dyke, why did you make us put all that work in if we didn't need to? That's because, you guys, sometimes the shortcut, this shortcut here, it's not actually shorter. Not always. Sometimes it's easier, but sometimes it's not. Let's go back to our original problem. x squared minus 2x minus 8. If we had x squared minus 2x minus 8 two weeks ago, and I said, hey guys, how could you do this? You would look at this and you'd say, oh, we can factor that. We need something that multiplies to negative 8 and adds to negative 2. I can do that. That's x, sorry, multiplies to negative 8, adds to negative 2. Okay, so that's x minus 4 and x plus 2. Okay, and now I know how to split that up, so I get x minus 4 equals 0, and x plus 2 equals 0, therefore, x equals 4, x equals negative 2. Ta-da! Hey guys, that's the same solution we just got. x is 4 and negative 2? Oh yeah, x is 4 and negative 2. But this took like way more time. Yikes. So your shortcut is not always shorter. Fortunately for you, we have a list of the best ways to use or to solve quadratics. Okay, you don't always need the quadratic formula. It is nice though, you get to sing the song, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And we love the song, but you can sing it on your own time. So here's how. Here are the fastest ways to solve quadratic equations. If you have a graphing calculator, then graph it. Graph it and find your x-intercepts. If the equation doesn't have an x term, like if it's, you know, x squared minus 9 equals 0, something like that, then, oh, look, that's difference of squares. Haha. -ha. 
It won't always be that way. Um, but then you can find square roots. Right, then you would say, oh, well, I'm going to add 9 to both sides, so x squared equals 9, and then I'm going to take the square roots of that. Oh, okay, so x equals plus or minus 3, right, that kind of thing. That's the fastest way in that situation. If you can factor the equation easily, like we just did up here with our brown work, we factored that guy really easily. If you can factor it, then factor it. Factor and use the zero product property. Right? If you have, you know, x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0, that easily factors into x plus 3, x plus 2 equals 0, and that tells you that x is negative 3 and x is negative 2. That's really fast. Sometimes factoring is your fastest way. Awesome. Sometimes the equation isn't factored easily, but you can mess with it a little bit. If you want to do that, you can complete the square. The downside, though, to completing the square is it does take a long time. And it takes a lot of steps. So there's a, there's a high chance of error there. Something else that takes a long time, but is fun and, and has a song. If it can't be factored, use the quadratic formula. Again, remember the song. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Because we love it. Keeping in mind, standard form. So here you go. These are the fastest ways in each situation. Now remember, when you solve a quadratic formula, your solutions, you can have many of them. You can have up to two solutions each time. And there is a shortcut that will tell you how many solutions to expect each time. That shortcut is called the discriminant. Um, parallel. The discriminant. Yay! Given the quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. If you have the quadratic formula and it looks like this, the part underneath the square root is called the discriminant. So the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. And the discriminant tells you how many solutions. So here are the three rules, real quick before we go. If the discriminant b squared minus 4ac, if that is greater than zero, that's one case. If your discriminant is equal to zero, that's another case. And if your discriminant is less than zero, that's another case. For example, if you have x squared minus 6x plus 7, our discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, which is negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 7, which comes out to 36 minus 28, which is 8. So here our discriminant is greater than zero. If I were to graph x squared minus 6x plus 7, I did that right there for you guys. You're welcome. How many solutions do I have? I have two. I have two solutions. We call them two real solutions. 
because sometimes you'll have imaginary solutions, but not in this class. So here we go, two real solutions. If our discriminant is greater than zero, you have two real solutions. Let's look at an example if our discriminant is equal to zero. For example, an x squared minus 6x plus 9, b squared minus 4ac is equal to negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 9, which is 36 minus 36 equals 0. So here we have a discriminant of 0. Wrong tool. What happens? Well, let's count how many solutions we have. Ready? One. We have one solution. So if our discriminant is zero, we have one real solution. So if our discriminant is equal to zero, there's one solution. If our discriminant is greater than zero, there's two solutions. Now let's find out what happens when our discriminant is less than zero. Hmm. All right. If our discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, is negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 11, that's 36 minus 44 gives us negative. 8, that's less than 0. Well, if that's true, it's less than 0. How many solutions do we have? This is none. Guys, we don't have any. We have zero real solutions. This is because, look at where our discriminant is, you guys. Our discriminant is under the square root. And if it's a negative number, you can't take a negative square root. You can't take a square root of a negative number. That's impossible. So thanks to the quadratic formula, we know that if you have a negative discriminant, you have no real solutions. None at all. Okay. So our discriminant tells you how many solutions you have. You can have two, one, or none at all. I hope you find lots and lots of joy from our quadratic formula song. We'll sing it one more time before we go to get it nice and stuck in your head. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Enjoy your homework.